Um, you okay, so can you hear? Oh, thank you. You okay, so then can you hear? Okay, then. Uh, for visual, yes, there is some visuals. I don't know how. Okay. And I don't know how to bear that. This is strange. And Nora says she sent you the PDF of the PowerPoint. Yes. So you can always follow along. If it's, I don't know how to bear it will be in live stream because of the glare and light. So hopefully. Okay, fantastic. If nothing else, it's nice that you can see her. Is Jenny waving? Mm -hmm. okay. We're going to start just so we can try to say that if you need more chai or water or anything, I'm going to go. So we'll start with the one with the spider. So, welcome to our annual general meeting, which according to our bylaws, we have to hold some semblance of coherence and reasonableness. So that's what we're doing here. Thank you for coming. This might be the largest turnout we've had, I don't know, but it's lovely to see the family and hopefully it will be of some interest to you what happens here. So our agenda, which might be the next one, there we go. So welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Point one done. No, Judy, sorry. Yeah. We need a better entertainment welcome. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. There you go. That's all right. Thank you. You're we all are weak. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what we we're not so sure how prepared we each are for each of our assignments here, but hopefully somebody. So I'll ask the secretary to come up, the existing secretary, and present. Sorry, <laughs> anyone can come up, and they have the minutes. From the last meeting, I'm going to have to hand the phone to you. 
of last year and uh, we had about nine members attend. Um, so some key uh, aspects that we discussed was the center search, uh, which is still going on and there is a committee for that. And uh, they run by heads that committee. So uh, hopefully he should be shedding more light if not Judy Ben would shed more light. Um, there was a PowerPoint presentation that was made uh, on the Brahma Kumari's functions uh, with the balance of spirituality and administration. How was the balance maintained in a board uh, that is that large uh, in the headquarters and how do we do it here in a smaller scale? Um, I think some of the service activities were reviewed and I'm sure Judy Ben and Nora Ben would be able to shed more light on that. Um, I think we talked about uh, BK Youth as a focus for last year's. I think we can definitely review how we can bring it uh, on board for this year. Um, I think we had uh, a very good praise about her uh, Heaven's Fitness, and that is still going on in a very good swing. And I think we've added. Uh, the ritual as well for this year. Uh, so hopefully many more send, uh, satellite spots will open up for center activities. Uh, BK revision was discussed uh, as a initiate that was initiated in 2017 and in 2019 it's still going on a full swing. So kudos to that. Um, yeah, I think that's that those were the pre uh, pretty much the big things. I think general data production regulation was discussed, talking about policies, uh, emails, slips, consents, and things like that. So that would be an ongoing thing, I guess, for the committee to, to discuss and improvise on. So that's kind of the nutshell of what uh, the minutes were. So along with that, Om Shanti. All right, so what I can say is a lot of these items are actually on the agenda today as well. So if you're thinking, what was that? Um, it will come up again today. But I can say regarding that last one, GD, GD, GDPR, the reason that the Madhuban form is held up hasn't appeared yet for this year is because I've been told that they need to update it with that consent. So um, what we might do, because souls are asking for it, and you have to start to input it, is give you last year's form, so at least we can get your travel information. And then when the new form comes, you may have to sign off on the new form as well. So we'll see if, uh, what uh, our NC deals with that as well. So I know that was a whirlwind review, but um, I'm going to spoon feed on this one. Is there anyone out there who would like to set a motion that these be accepted into the minute vault? Okay. Does anyone want to second that motion? Valerie has second the motion that the minutes be master are accepted. All right. So that's the second and third item. I should ask, was there anything from that? Any questions? Again, a lot of it will appear today again. If you're wondering what was that, um, hopefully there'll be expansion. But any questions on that? We're good? All right. Does anyone need more chat? <laughs> so now it gets super exciting. It's like a magic act. We're going to dissolve the previous board of directors. So I know Devang's not here, but if you can have the present the last year, the present 
The board were about to dissolve, but those souls can stand up. And hopefully you know who you are. I think Seth Binder is on the board too. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So um, myself, Nora, uh, Suma, and Seth Binder, and De Lang were the board. Um, and different positions. The most interesting are the secretary and the treasurer, the rest who really wants to know, but um, those were the really the, the main practical pieces on there. So um, a motion to dissolve the board of directors. Valerie, seconded by Nora and Mahendra. What? Mahendra can get a third. <laughs> Thirded. <laughs> Um, so now we'd like to propose, uh, it says discussion of the board of directors, and this might be a great place to just like speak a little bit about the idea. So um, the reason that not maybe this board meeting, but in Madhuban, the board meeting is so interesting is to me, it's really, really explores what Raj Yoga is about. Because Raj Yoga is about a yoga or practice to give me spiritual governance. And that's what the board explores is something called spiritual governance. <coughs> this is the marriage of leadership, very pragmatic, very practical, but with a spiritual stage. And that makes it very interesting. So the image that we seem to bring up every year. <laughs> a few years ago, something called global functioning was created in the Yagya. And they chose the image of a double helix to suggest two strands that are interwoven, the spiritual strand and the administrative strand. And so you can probably tell it all from there, but I'll try to juggle everything here. and. And use this diagram, which I did not create. Um, those who are connected to global functioning mm -hmm. just created. Um, so you've got the board, the board structure, the administrative side, and that is the key of what they're looking at: is legal and financial decisions. So, um, sorry, I'm probably close to a speaker. So, um, you know, there's not this feeling of. We can do whatever we want because God is on our side. <laughs> it's actually, we have to respect the laws of the law of man because we're God's representatives. So this is sort of responsible for helping us to stay legally and financially in an accurate place. And it's become increasingly, I wouldn't say complicated, but interesting um, as the idea expands and goes into parts of the world but there's some really delicate situations to deal with. This is really, really important mm -hmm. to keep the centers going, that they do things accurately. Um, there's so many stories that can be shared that we won't go into, um, but many spaces, the board might even have souls that are not BKs on it, that have knowledge, worldly knowledge, in terms of legal or financial issues, because it's that important and they need that kind of input. What that can lead to is losing the spiritual side. So always having to keep that connection um, when the final decisions are made. And really, I think Brahma mostly made decisions to love. <laughs> really, what's the loving thing to do? What's the thing that's going to benefit souls? But still, I, I'm constantly in awe of Brahma Baba, if you want to call it Sakra Bhakta's decision making. When it came to board the legal issues and the quite decisiveness of his decisions. You know, probably the most well known is his insistence because many of the souls that came in the beginning were below legal age, they were young girls. And his insistence, they have to get a letter of permission. This is before there was any opposition or any upkeep. You know, they were, the families were very, many their daughters come and he said, you have to get, like, you could see this will be very important in the future. You have to get a letter of permission right, from your parents because you're under 18. You have to get one. 
And then later on, those letters of permission became very important, so important. Someone tried to burn the building they were kept in unsuccessfully. <laughs> they just knew this is a legal right that they had attained very early. So he was just so far sighted in his decision making. Why? Because his third eye was working, because of spirituality. So ideally, <laughs> these two things should go together, right? So the decisions are legal, transparent, but also far sighted, spiritually speaking. So that's what this side deals with, is the sort of pragmatic, practical, the administration. And then there's the spiritual side. Here we have something called the center service team. But this is sort of a structure, and it's a spiritual structure. So that's why we refer to Madhuban as our spiritual headquarters. And it's not our legal headquarters. Right. Each one is each one's a self-sufficient entity, mostly at the national level, and is the exception. But Madhuban is our spiritual, so they're on the, so on the spiritual side, not the board side. Because there are spiritual headquarters, so we have something called the charter, the spiritual charter of cooperation for the spiritual functioning, and it's according to Srinath. It's not a legal document, it's not legally binding. But it tells us how to function spiritually. It's on that side. It would not hold up in the court of law. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you can see the structure. There is something called the, I think, IOC, International Operating Committee. So we have our administrative head. She does not like that name, but Daddy Jenkins. <laughs> and then we have a co administrative head, who is Daddy Gulzar. We have an additional administrative head, who is Daddy Rafa and then we did have three senior brothers. We now have two <laughs> from Eshvai, who did a ridiculous amount of accounting. He has been replaced by someone much younger in the body who's doing the accounting, but we have Rish Mahan, who is, I think, chief spokesperson, and then there are secretary general. So we have the senior body. There's a few other bits to that, but the RCs are part of that international operating committee. And then there's, I think, three other souls who just, have good headspace for this. So they help out with the International Operating Committee and that dietary and, and Judy Rogers. So oddly enough, all from the Americas. But this is the IOC, so the spiritual head. Pretty powerful. Yeah. These are like we've got in it some of the top eight souls on the planet. <laughs> We're in really good hands. And then next down, the next level of um, leadership is the regional coordinators, the RCs. So it's quiz time, just to see if you're awake. Who are our RCs and which region are they providing leadership in? Go ahead. Mohini Ben. So Sister Mohini, who, what region? So it's the Americas and the Caribbean. So North, South, Central America, the Caribbean, it's the largest region. It's ridiculously large. So that's huge. Okay, so we've got one of the six. Not Mira. Janty Ben. And the region. She kind of shares it with Sudesh. But she is Europe and Middle East. So she has a very interesting, probably the most delicate region, which is the Middle East. That's a really complicated region, which is perfect for it. We've got two. Didi Nirmala. Didi Nirmala. Didi Nirmala. What's her region? Australia and South Africa. Australasia. Mm -hmm. Good. We've got three. Again, a way one. Vedanti Ben, who is? Africa. Mm -hmm. And... Sudesh, who is Europe. She's stationed in Germany, but she helps out with Europe. And the one that people probably know the least one about, Chakradari. Mm -hmm. Chakradari, which is Russia and the CIS. All right. So those are the six RCs. And another one, um, it's when they broke up some of the Baltic and the uh, to call this, but not right. It's close to Russia. <laughs> um, there are names that I can't hope to pronounce, but they're Eastern Europe. 
Um, so there's a lot of harmony between the RFCs, as you can imagine. That's a pretty powerful group. And the level of harmony and respect that they have between each other is remarkable. So next down, you see a funny thing here, NC or NCT. National coordinator or national coordinating team. And this is a, a fairly new development. So we used to have a system of national coordinators, a single individual, and then they were finding in certain areas it was important to develop a team. So Spain is one of those, quite remarkable. And the level of harmony, as you can imagine, is great. The NC or NCTs recently developed a forum called the CNC. I'm trying to remember what that stands for. It's not community. It's something rather of national coordinator. So when you have an NCT, they have a meeting every year. And it's a forum for them to talk about really big issues they encounter with souls, but they're also encountering those big issues. So like-minded to like-minded. And they'll send one member of the team and just involve them. So this is a pretty powerful group as well. And then the final one are these little guys here, CCs. Center coordinator. Center coordinator, sometimes it's CCT as well. Center coordinating team. Not really. I think the closest I've seen in Canada is Montreal. Giselle is the instrument, but they have uh, what they call a coupe. So it's about three or four souls who Giselle always involves in decision making. So, so that's kind of the spiritual side of things. And then we have our CST, our Central Service Team. So I don't think we have the other one with the Venn diagrams, but which is okay. I'll just explain what it has to do with the board. You obviously, the double helix suggests there's communication, a pretty healthy communication of working together between these two aspects. What is ideal, it's okay. Sorry. What's ideal is that you have a group of individuals on the board and a set of different individuals over here on the CST, but one or two that connect between both and help to communicate and liaison. So that's the setup that we have. Uh, Mayor, do you know what Venn diagrams are? Yes. So how would you describe a Venn diagram? Whoa, that was a really good definition. Uh, for those of you who don't remember, I'll just draw it visually. You have two circles, and there's an area of overlap. And this is considered a healthy structure so that they can sort of operate independently. There is a little bit of distance, but there's also a good communication between the two and there is similarity, as we've explained. So that's kind of how it works. There's a lot of invisible stuff not suggested in this, which I feel was quite active before global functioning, where just naturally, the spiritual governance was there. Um, so it wasn't perhaps as structured as this, but there was that deep respect for the laws of the land and yet that sort of spiritual stage carried through those laws with that far sightedness and the sensitivity to the soul. So that's what we're always trying to get back to, is that situation. Is there anyone who has any questions on this? I think you've all seen it before. Anything to add or ask? Nap time? <laughs> All right. Yes, question. I'm never knowing which one I should be reading. Yes. Question two. I was wondering, I know the aim of the global function was to mirror what the Mahara is exactly like what Bella was able to do. Mm -hmm. How does that fall in? Mm -hmm. Well, the reason I'm, I'm sort of bringing this up now is because this is the so-called discussion of board of directors. We're about to look at the board of directors that we're going to suggest for the coming year, if not years. Um, what Spain, I think it was, shared, they were the, one of the first, I think, to develop an NCT. And I'll never forget when they shared about it on the panel. It really, really touched me. This, I think, is 
what we were trying to get administratively is that hidden element I was talking about. What they shared when they came into the team, and it required a lot of humility on the part of the MC to do this, actually, is they shared that what makes them successful is they turned it the glue of purity between them. So all of this, right, we've got this sense, this accuracy, this is meant to provide purity. And those were combined, right, in the original days. That was all there. So that's sort of bringing us to, I don't know how successful this has been. I always feel everything unfolds according to drama. And we just do what we can to try and always think, bring things back. To the yagya, but it's so invisible how the yagya looks. You can't, there's no real format it, whether or not there's purity there. That, that's really the bottom line. So when we look at the beginning of the yagya and the first committee, the first board, the first trust was made up of eight souls. I think that it changed after a while, but eight souls. And I won't go through the names. I know Mama's one of them. <laughs> um, but there are eight souls, and they were Matsajis and Kumaris. Now, we're talking about Brahma Baba having a ridiculously large amount of worldly wealth. And him renouncing it and putting it in the hands of teenagers and mothers who are one who but probably have no training in wealth management or legal administration. That is a remarkable decision to make. But what they did have was purity. So his feeling that we need to put this stuff in very pure hands. We can teach skills. We can explain the laws of the land. But in terms of purity, either you bring it or you don't. <laughs> so that's the easy part. This is the invaluable part. So we were kind of really inspired and I've been super inspired reading a century of service because you really see how this works and look at Debbie Jenke. Um, the role that purity plays in the success of the board, the administration of center is huge. Even if as the blessing was suggesting this morning, even if it looks like it's not working or there's not results, there's not quantity, but if that effort according to Srinath was there, it's fun. In time, it will create some ripples, some outcome, but to really have that purity there. So inspired by that, um, we were going to propose the following souls. I'd love all of you to be on the board, um, and you all could, because none of us are trained in any of this, but you all are very very much lovers of purity. So you all are super qualified, but it becomes unwieldy when we have this many souls. It's really hard to get everyone together. So we have to limit the numbers on the board. Um, what I'll do first is I'll introduce this half, the center service team. So if I can have those from the center service team stand up. So you have to wheel your head around 180 to see one of them. Hendra's at the back. <laughs> the revolving lighthouse at the back, <laughs> and Valerie and Nora, who's the revolving at the front, <laughs> spinning the discus of the self at the front, and then myself. So that's the center service team. We try to meet at least once a month. And of course, anyone can always give input in terms of and what we look at is development of sustenance for BKs, programming for BKs. That's our first commitment, actually. And then development of programming and sustenance for, for other souls as well. So that's mostly what we look at and strategies. And when we do the service report, I think we get a sense of, of what's involved there. Um, so I'm going to ask uh, Nora to stand up because she is the element, and I'm already standing. So when we look at the Venn diagram, this is that middle area that crosses over that Mayor was talking about, okay? Um, so the other souls who are currently on the board that we'd like to stay on the board is Suma, who's been acting as secretary. And although he is not a Kamari or a Mataji, Devang, <laughs> who brings a really beautiful feeling to the whole thing, and he is a mother after all. 
So Devang, we we invited to stay on the board as well. And Seth Binder, we've invited to stay on the board. So basically our board is pretty much the same. We're just expanding it. And we've asked two more souls to join the board. The idea being that as some of us go off the board, because Brahma Baba was not on the board. Was it? He was a spiritual resource, but he actually wasn't on the board. So my vision is to eventually get off the board <laughs> um, and to, to allow others to have that period of training, if you will, to start to take on some of those roles on the board. And that would be Jima Ben, we've invited to join the board, uh, training to become treasurer, actually. And Ritu Ben, we've invited to, to join the board. So I'm going to ask what the current board might look like that's being proposed to stand up. That would be Jima, Ritu, Nora, Suma, Najin Devang there, and Judy. So that is the motion being put forward. Actually, someone else probably has to put the full motion. Actually, no one's dissolved at this moment, so I can put it forward. <laughs> I'm a nobody. So I am proposing, oh, I can't elect myself. Someone has to nominate me, but I nominate all these other people. <laughs> okay, there you go. So um, any thoughts or feelings? As you can see, it got the messages we're looking for. Um, and then there's Devang who was saying, I really don't like what I'm like, staying on the board. He tried to be liberated. I just think it's about the addiction. So, any thoughts or feelings? Does anyone want to second this group? Manisha! All right, it's that easy. Woo, look at you. <laughs> um, anything anyone wants to share after? They say we sort of have to go through these motions. Um, but in truth, other than fulfilling our bylaws, I do actually even have a seat. I do actually hope that the board can be practically more active. So one of the things that we want to do is have them actually meet with the center service team and get a sense of what the center service team does. And so that communication is there between the two groups. Because right now the center service team is kind of independently making decisions that the board theoretically should be a little bit more involved because it involves money. <laughs> so, so we'd like them to be aware of what's going on with the, with the service uh, development. How does that sound to everyone? Are you okay with the current board moving forward? Any questions or things to share? We just want this to be okay. All right. So I am going to invite Nora up to do the presentation of service activities. And if we're lucky, she'll sit in there. <laughs> I don't think you're going to be lucky. I don't know. We felt that it's be there one more year to allow for transition, no. No. and then um, someone will take on the role of president and just go into spiritual resource. I will. I will share on this that I actually. I'll turn it on. I wrote to um, Sister Marine, and part of what inspired this is that. Uh, for those who've been to Shakti Bhavan, um, there have been changes there, obviously. And um, we started to feel it could be used more and more. It already is. A lot of administration, it really serves as an administrative office. And we also was hoping to accommodate visitors there or anyone needing a retreat there. So more and more of it was being used for BK functions. And obviously, the basement is being used for BK functions. So that meant that we were kind of having to do some legal things, some insurance things, and some financial things, and signing for those ourselves. And that just doesn't look right for me to sign for things for a place where I live. It just looks strange. So it really pushed this idea that I had heard in Madhuban, and I followed up with Sister Maureen. Some of you don't know Sister Maureen, but Maureen and Janty Ben are very involved in the coordination of Global Cooperation House in London. And they had mentioned this, and I followed up. So they are, they basically are benefited from the services and programs that Global Cooperation House offers, i.e., they're accommodated there. They can't, according to their bylaws, they can't be on the board. So we've got this case of this RC, who's on the spiritual side, cannot be legally involved because they're benefiting from programs and services. So that was what started to inspire this change. So eventually, you know, 
depends on drama, but transitioning a bit from the legal side because of benefiting from accommodation programs, services, etc. Does that make sense? Or is it just been loosely? Okay, so center service. We hope not to put anyone to sleep. So we'll keep things sort of essential, actually. So um, we have been trying to keep some sort of, I guess, tally or just some record of hustles find out about us and also been keeping a record as well of just how many courses that we've been able to offer. This is actually quite interesting only because comparing to last year when Baba Center was actually located in the town, close to downtown. And so it was actually quite meaningful actually to look at what was being offered only because I think I had the idea that was not as many courses being offered. But these numbers over here actually mean whether we had more or less compared to the previous year. And there's quite a few actually of the Raji Yoga courses that are being offered. And so when I were looking at um, just the calendars from the previous year, um, we were really trying to offer, there was at least a Raji Yoga course being offered twice, about once or twice a month which is very, very lovely. Uh, one of the things that we were just mentioning here that we just started last year, I think later last year with the center service team and decided we'll try to have maybe a course in this room and a course in the far room. You'll see a little bit later on when we look at just again, the essence of the financials that um, it was only last year that we started having that room dedicated to open this year. So people, hey, why don't we just use that room as well for class as well? Um, so we've only tried that a couple of times. This last time was quite interesting because there were 35 souls who signed up for the English course. And we were here somehow to fit everyone. There was like 13 signed up for the Gujarati course. Mm -hmm. And so we weren't sure how that was going to work in terms of, of um, the shared space, I suppose. But that was really the essence of this was just what kind of course to have. A lot of focus again on Raja Yoga. I just want to interrupt here because I know that we um, a lot of courses in the morning. Um, these were just the formally structured ones we had the brochure. It's not to uh, ignore what the amount is in the morning. So that would be like a 10 zillion or something. Over there. Yeah, that was one of the most um, loved one on ones that happened. That we yeah. Had. yeah, that's not captured on here. There are a lot of, like, I had I would be here all the time. And that was definitely something that he had shared. It would be lovely if, if souls could be able to come you know, and just be present in the space here. And that's actually happened. And I remember her soul, um, she was from La Piguarca. I brought her in during lunchtime, actually, to uh, Baba Center in uh, Kensington. And she said the moment she walked in, she was remembering about churches a long time ago, which used to be open 24 hours a day. And that anyone could just come and just feel safe. There. And that was the first feeling she got when she came to the center. And that really stayed with me because in the original days, it was just like not a bed by you just near here all the time. So um, there are a lot of one on ones that actually happen. Um, it's more on another page, but uh, one on ones that have happened at Shakti Bhavan, one on ones that have happened at Heavens. Um, this year we've had one of the ones that happened in the central library. And so we're just being very creative and certainly a sign that we would like to be able to have a central public space as well in the center. So that was the biggest thing on this aspect. But a couple other things I regret um Mahendra by I didn't know what the numbers were in terms of the nearly prep so I didn't have anything on there, but it seems like I think that there's a nearly prep that happens with every uh, Raji Yoga course, you can see it happens quite frequently through 
figure. Um, and Sister Judy um, has been meeting with new souls as well. So that's been really helpful, especially one of the biggest things is how can we um, ensure that souls who start to come feel that they are um, able to understand, that especially capture the vibrations and um, the purity that's the most important piece in terms of, of joining into the class. And finally, we did not have any Raja Yoga courses for PKs this last year. PKU, PKU, PK Youth this last year. There was the hope. Um, I mean, August isn't over yet. So for those who uh, have uh, the mayor is one of them, we took it a couple of years ago. I don't know if that bored to tears, but I think that it is, uh, we're trying to see again, you know, it comes up in a later one, but is are the BK youth, how do they feel about something um, that's being provided to them? Um, the challenge, of course, is with school. Um, I think trying to travel to some places by themselves is also a challenge as well. And so in a way, they're actually at the mercy of uh, someone else's schedule. So that's a, that's a couple of things. But, uh, so that comes up a little bit later in the slides as well. Sorry, any questions about that? So that's really drawn. <laughs> um, so we were looking at just existing things that were happening um, for this center and we found some other things that we won't mention in a second. But this was new for last year. So um, if souls aren't aware, we do have this national study group call that has been happening, I'm not sure how long now, about like five, six years. And um, what was really essential about that particular one, this national study group, is that um, there was one year, I think it was 2012, 2015, um, Judy Ben, according to the drama, was, um, was had a meeting actually with Ben Kuzo. And uh, she had asked Ben Kuzo, how can the family in Canada unify? And that equals our the signal we should study together. So that's what that particular call is really about. Please. Actually, I just want to add for those of you who read Daddy, I'm going to try to find it. But uh, for our next semester call, if you read Daddy Jenkins' question and answer class, maybe it was question and answer the other class, she actually said the same thing. She said, How much it helps the intellects if you have piano conversations together? And uh, that's a lovely seg segue, actually, to the BK revision. Um, historically, BK revision was happening once a month or so, and I think it was like a Thursday, Friday, perhaps Thursday, Friday, Saturday, once a month, and sometimes it didn't happen. Um, and then it actually moved to this year, which is now every Saturday. Um, so that happens at Shakti Bhavan, but even more exciting as well now that there is BK revision that happens on Saturdays. We call it BK Hindi Workshop. Um, that happens on Saturday mornings here in the yoga class as well. So these is so that's what Judy Ben was sharing about this the center service team and actually for all souls it's just this inspiration of how can we sustain bonds. Um, I remember this one year I was in Peace Village and it was for a healthcare um, something about healthcare, spiritual, like values in healthcare, and it was really for healthcare providers, how they can introduce spirituality. Um, but I remember it was for those who were interested in facilitating this and bringing this to any healthcare facility. But while I was doing it, I was always thinking about how the facilitators themselves feel sustained, because there's no point in trying to sustain others if you can't sustain yourselves. So that's been a big piece in terms of all the things that have actually come, came up in the past and what you see emerging on the right side. Um, so we did want to mention, just back to the BK youth, we did have young adult community that was happening on the Sundays last year. And so we would have actually, before Baba's room was transformed, there was Hindi room in this room. There was English really in the far room, and then in the middle room, uh, there was the, the youth. And um, however, we, for, for certain reasons, um, we decided to see if maybe 
the youth would like to join the young adult. So I don't know if they had any input if that was a good idea, mutual, indifference, harmony, appeal, if you wish to share anything. So maybe that's the case too, we don't really know what the needs of actually the youth are, where they are at, and uh, I could chat with the youth, but not in the open. It's <laughs> <laughs> a bit overwhelming, but yeah. Which is quite interesting, I don't want to jump too far, but we did have a Kamari's tea last year, I think it was in December, so Maybe Judy then can speak about that once we get there. Um, just in terms of, again, for the future, what we can do. Um, it seems like mountain trips with visiting DKs, like, why are we adding that to the list? Because we're having increasing number of DKs coming, actually. We had many, many come last year. And so it seems like, along with that, actually, it's just a lot of opportunities for workshops and meditations. So, on the other side, um, we've been having. This is new because of just how things are happening right now in Maduba. Basically, because the flood is coming earlier, it is through, yes, a previous transmission, but the experience is that flood is coming. And so, because it happened so early in the morning, we just end up happening on a day right here. So, I think that's what we were thinking that would be happening again this year, but we never know. Um, since we, since basically Main Center has moved into Shakti Bhavan, um, for the time being, uh, we start having Amr Vela Bhaktis, actually. Um, so they were helping me for two weeks at a time, and we had a total of three last year, but it's been lovely because now what has transpired is it happening every month as well. And so that is why Murvi is happening at 5 o'clock in the morning. It's just actually Judy Ben had touched base and asked the, the souls who were coming would you like to move it to another time or would you like to keep it at five o'clock right after Anna Baylor? And there was quite a large response of why you keep it at that time um, just because of the experience being in that silence with Baba and then being able to absorb them. But really um, praise goes to the instruments and all the souls who come <laughs> because it's not easy to, be, uh, to waking up at that time in the morning shower and getting ready to come for kind of daily and the class. So that is I, I find that extremely inspiring. We haven't done anything with this disaster preparedness <laughs> workshop, even though so may not know about it or may know about it. I don't even know who recorded it. I think they actually did this PowerPoint that Soul Peel and Peel by both had worked really hard on. And so the intention of that is we know that you need to make up ever ready. But at the same time there were these three signals that uh, that came from Daddy Bolsar. And uh, does everyone remember what those three signals were? And so um, the second piece was the actual, I think the actual um, message was, um, was accumulating the stock. And certainly, we took it on multiple levels. One was actually the physical level of just physical stuff, uh, keeping themselves prepared. And so, Mahendra Bai and Sophia actually did quite a bit of research to finding some suggested materials that you want to purchase for that. Um, but along with that, it was actually about you know, accumulating stock of power. And so, that was very much related actually to how I harmonize with others as what I was talking about today and also kind of what I'm there. Um, last year was when we started increasing uh, the live stream activities and a big wave to Mahendra by the back um, in terms of a lot of live stream things going on. <laughs> Mahendra is also on the national IT team and he is very ever patient with us Shakti's over here who was annoying him with all these IT questions. Um, so we switched over to YouTube and that's been how many have tuned in? So the question Judy asked is how many have actually used a live stream? Well, quite a few. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're still working on it. That's in another slide, but the IT focus is increasing. 
And we're just sharing a bit about this year is that if souls aren't aware, actually it was near the end of last year, so it is relevant, the virtual center. So Canada has a virtual center that has been created. Um, so the, a lot of the, the CCs are all involved in that, but like Eric is involved in that, Judy Ben is involved a lot as well. And then there are these, which you call liaisons, so I'm not sure what the word is in Hindi, but basically just another individual who can communicate with the CCs. So if you go on to, it's a really good question, because what happened was, first off, um, Mahindra, can you bring the national website up onto the, thank you. So what was happening was we have eight physical official centers. Um, we are the second largest country in the world. There is, it's just impossible for souls throughout the whole country to get to those eight centers physically, even within one city, they cannot get to the center. So they, but there was a huge need. You wouldn't believe how many emails were coming to our national office. Hi, I'm either a transferring BK or I'm interested in your services and I live in some remote place. What to do? We have to serve them. So Brother Eric, if you keep scrolling down, I think you have this inspiration for a virtual center. It's not physical. It exists online. Two souls came forward to pioneer this. Um, Aaron and Debbie, both of the East. And so originally it was to serve souls who live in remote spaces. What we started to notice, it was providing coherence even for BKs who live in cities with physical centers. So it's starting to serve a few different purposes, but all an online platform. So if you want to get information, that's their email. They're going to start to come up with a three-month newsletter. So trying to set their program like we do. We do four months. They'll do three months. Send that out by email. I think we just got something. And so we can forward that on as well. Um, and so what the physical centers try to do is provide programs that can fulfill that need. So we um, transmit our world meditation hour. We transmitted the Amit Vela Bhakti, um, the idea of giving the courses online, a lot of possibilities. So that's, um, you'll notice in the financials as well that there's quite a bit of um, Baba's money that has been spent on IT lately, actually, because the hope was actually to increase accessibility. And one of the things that we're trying to do, we, it's in the long haul, was to try to have meditation commentaries available as well. Um, but we have interesting carp accounts with, uh, with the IT because we just got a new Mac with Baba and uh, it's been in repairs for a long time. We just picked it up today and uh, so that's been quite interesting. Um, and as you did on the sharing yesterday in the class, I was talking about efficiency and as well, and how long has it been taking us to get the IT going? It's been on and on and on. Um, but it certainly feels like, I mean, it's been a lot in my mind is how do I stay in essence in the midst of this expansion? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's all in my mind a lot. So I know all these little things that have to get done. You know, Shakti Bhavan trying to make sure it's as comfortable for souls you know, for for future BK guests and trying to stay with Baba and keeping, as Baba said, these really holiday thoughts. Um, otherwise, um, you kind of get lost in all those details. So um, that's the essence of um, the live stream activities. And we'll mention a little bit more later, but we had our first teacher training check with Baba live stream as well. And um, there's a handful of souls that were actually um, in that training. And just a few things we'll mention a little bit later on. So um, the one thing that we want to put on here as well is, again, this was all a lot of it actually. The essence of the new programs that come up in 2018 was really how do we sustain ourselves? How do we sustain ourselves? That was the most important thing. 
Um, I remember when I went to Notre Dame for the first time in 2007, and I was invited to the International Youth Forum, actually. And um, specifically, just uh, myself and another sister were asked to actually join in on facilitating this retreat, too. And it was just about um, ensuring the facilitators of these instruments were experiencing powerful experiences of soul consciousness, powerful experiences of you know, this connection with other. And it stayed with me since that time. It's like, wow. This I feel is so essential is that I feel sustained and what can come from that. And Baba talked about that today. We feel so fortunate and you can't help but share things with others because that's all in your mind. That's all that's you're thinking about. You can tell you know, listener that you think <laughs> what's always on your mind, right? It's always about service, it's about Baba, it's reality. And so the just in terms of that, the conducted meditation that started, I believe it was last year. Um, and also, um, there was also a hope as well to increase this powerful atmosphere here that happened last year. You can probably see those signs that are on the doors when you come in. The hope wasn't trying to um, bar souls from not coming into them, that wasn't the intention. But it was especially for souls to be able to take the benefit from the powerful atmosphere. And souls have actually shared that they said, Oh, I didn't realize until we started this that this is really, really a meaningful experience to come into this space and take that sustenance because it's really all about purity. So that's been something souls have actually mentioned. And so, in terms of sustenance, again, the whole essence of all of this was really a lot about sustenance. Um, we started doing this bhakti that was on the third Sunday after early class, but it, it's kind of you know, slid away. <laughs> I'm not sure the thoughts on uh, why that was the case. But um, uh, so just many different attempts, I suppose, to say that um, for that. I don't know if there's anything you did not share about the Kumari tea, but in terms of just the one thing that came up quite a bit was just um, is there anything you can do to support the year? So, uh, um, so this slide here is basically about uh, what kind of things have happened in the community, in the public. And um, And so you can see on this list again, um, these numbers on the very top. Here was basically, I don't think I changed the numbers. <laughs> maybe, maybe those aren't really accurate, actually. So, um, but, and uh, Judy may actually have to verify if, if there's something that's missing, actually, in the middle column. But we did notice that workshops in general um, have definitely decreased. But um, I feel the light of the reason why was um, do we have enough instruments available? Um, but the center, but the resort is being quite far from the center has definitely affected things for sure. And we've also noticed that we used to have many souls who would just come walking into the center. They lived in the area. Hazelton was high pedestrian area, many souls of walking. And so that has definitely affected things quite a bit. Um, and so the number of workshops is definitely considerably going down for sure. Those numbers up there are really not accurate. I think we've that. Um, in terms of what we had last year in terms of workshops, we had one workshop, which was very lovely because the two sisters who came actually were from Red Deer. So, so sisters, Sister Menard, uh, who lives in right there, one of his children. Um, she has two lucky daughters, and so they were the ones who came for that. And souls may have actually met them actually at the finish of the last one gathering. We had one silence in the fitness. It wasn't, I don't know if we call it a workshop, but it was, uh, it was a little bit of a focus, and I think it was an extended one, so that was lovely. 
Um, but the one that highlighted actually is that we actually had some um, ongoing workshops that were happening in Shakti actually specifically with um, souls that who were consistently coming to Baba and his dropping sessions or meditations who were definitely exhibiting um, a keen interest um, in consistency in terms of uh, their practice with Raj Yoga and were actually even demonstrating a deeper sense of insights and understanding. So there was a, a small group of consistent souls that Judy Ben and uh, was the instrument for and Diane Ben was actually very, very instrumental and supportive of that as well that's happened there at Shakti Bhavan. Um, so um, they were really just about going deeper. That's really the feeling about it. Um, so in terms of off-site partnerships, um, I wasn't sure if there was anything you wanted to share about that Judy event because there's a lot of them actually that was uh, through to heavens and which you see some of these other um, locations like Nexon and Devon. I don't know if City of Calgary is still um, has any of those sessions going on. But, um, is there anything you want to add? Um, the only thing that was, I guess you could say, that was new was actually the Marriott bonus. And so, um, I'm not sure Swati Ben, if you want to share anything about that. It was the first time we did that because you were in some of these. Actually, I was there for a couple of minutes, but the response was really good. Mm -hmm. Like to all the employees. Actually, that was a little bit different because it was a meditation center in, into wellness care. That was mainly like health and safety thing. But uh, that was like, they had like a really different experience on that. And they really enjoyed that one. So definitely a different experience. So the inner fitness um, has been aiming to happen about twice a month. And uh, so Heavens has been really very, very cooperative in having their space for Baba. Um, we started having drop-in meditations starting last year as well. Sorry, I didn't do the list there. I was as well at, at Heavens. And um, for a long time, actually, when Baba Center was centrally located, there was always a Wednesday meditation. And so you would always see the same souls in and so when Baba Center moved, um, there wasn't that there anymore. And so because I think that Wednesday night has been happening for like decades, right? So so that's been wonderful um, for that space. And uh, I don't know if Judy wants to share about this, but there were souls who are consistently coming to those drop-in meditations who haven't taken the course, but they were actually experiencing the course during those meditations. Very powerful because... Uh, um, you could feel that they were actually increasing their sense of concentration. They were imbibing things that many of them are now taking this new course. Actually, the first time Raj Yoga course is actually happening in heavens, and they they're just in a different level in terms of what they are achieving. So that's very powerful. Um, so some other locations that are dropping coming up this year and. We were hoping perhaps to maybe involve um, the Central Library, the new one that's downtown this year, um, to some capacity. So that was the hope. The feeling was that there is just more of a need for something more central in general. Special events. Um, I think it's pretty explanatory, self-explanatory up there. But the one thing I wanted to highlight was actually the family gatherings. You know, Five gatherings last year at the Kalers and at Swahi Ben's place at um, Ganesh Bhavan, at uh, the Sengars, and then I've had some kind of brush buys. And those were lovely because there were options for our family to get together, but with the spiritual piece that was really a big piece was the meditation, there was all the workshops and discussions. That was always a theme, so that was 
um, a chance for the family to get together. We know that the family loves to come together. The family loves to actually have that sustenance together. So that's been really, really good thing. Um, otherwise, Sister Tanya comes every year and really um, adds another piece of karma yoga, which is really lovely in terms of soul consciousness um, while walking in the vineyard. And the only thing that I just want to mention is that we're having an increasing number of visiting DKs. So those have become also those who are contributing to workshops and so on. So my brother Dorlo would come, the world transition, and John Shaker would come. Lots of practices in soul consciousness. I know my had come this year and again share about their her experiences in self-realization. So those are the things that have come up. Um, um really the thing that has really uh, come up is in terms of this is service service activities we already talked about them. is there anything you can particularly do to support the youth and so perhaps there might be a good beauty that you said just to perhaps really connect with them on a one -on one level and um, see what is it that they might be interested in um, for the teachers training that has come up, it's I'm not sure if someone's going to work with Brother Kenneth, but uh, the hope was for it to be less content and more experiences. And I feel like that's definitely something we're all moving towards. And Sister Judy has been doing the foundations course, um, and it's in heavens, and it's only 75 minutes long. So it feels like as a drama is demanding that we just focus more on experiencing things. Um, we've mentioned quite a few of these things, which is necessarily anything this is really um, essential. So I'm going to move on to the next page. Um, just in general, um, there's, there's a lot of sustenance that's happening and support that's happening between the family, the entire family, whether it's accommodations from Others' residences, um, especially with uh, where Spotty Ben lives, it's very, very um, important in terms of when you know, Hadev was here and the Ben were here. Um, but to be able to support them with this class here. And uh, even though there are BKs who live so far away, except when they don't want to come in here, you know, the heart is there, it gives with the keys. And so, um, there was a hope for definitely more centralized activities in general. And we already talked about the IT piece and we hope to um, improve the audio vision and like that as well. Um, this is just a picture basically of how souls are actually contacting the center. So as you can see, the largest one actually on there is actually being about that's the biggest piece, it still is, which I think is really interesting. Um, even though there's a lot of social media, but they're on social media right now, um, still word of mouth. So I, I wonder if that's gonna always be the case. Is that just especially when it comes to spiritual and the souls, just feel that when it comes to something like this, is, this is who you can trust to tell you what is useful. But we'll talk about my souls as soon. So he asks us to focus on ourselves so much. And um, yeah, basically we still have souls coming through knowing about Sister Shivani and so many things. And event rights is increasingly becoming a place for souls to learn about the center as well. Some of these aren't really actually clear when you say that you go to the international website or the country website, because I assume they would somehow know about those websites and be able to get here. So. I don't know if there's any questions with all that. Sorry, that was quite dry. Um, finally, the financials. We don't need to know about all the little numbers that are on there. There's no case. But we just wanted to mention a few things that we just noticed compared to to the year before, uh, 2017 and 2018, um, the big piece in terms of uh, 
expenses has gone down considerably because uh, we don't have that to be in the center location for rent. And um, so that is just looking off of those numbers and we to submit them to revenue. That's a big thing that has come up. Um, mention a little bit more about the next slide, but um, there we did mention on the slide really is just showing us that there was a large expense in terms of IT and probably will continue as the Hendra Bond continues to help with trying to get the IT going as so, well. Um, especially with the virtual center, they're hoping that most of the centers in Canada, whatever their existing programs are, if they're able to get their IT as well, like efficient too. Um, for example, uh, Brother Eric has been mentioning is getting you know, these live, um, very interactive sessions of ours with um, through the virtual center. So it's been very, very meaningful. So that's where we are going to spend through as well. Um, this slide, the last financial slide, I think, um, it is really that there's a large amount of contributions and a huge part of that is, of course, it's the kind of um, contributions, financially speaking, is one thing, but in terms of the um, with Sujata coming, Sister Sujata and Sister Shashi coming, and Madhvi Ben came, you know, you just send a note to the family and everyone is just very, very, very supportive in so many different ways. So that was a big thing that we noticed on here as well. Um, the other thing we wanted to let schools know, just so schools aware, is that uh, Baba has a Facebook account, Baba has an Instagram account, and uh, Sister Laura actually is the main instrument for that. Um, if it wasn't because of her, that's actually what she does for a lot profession as well. So she's been able to do a lot of that on possibly the basis. She's the one that puts everything that's on social media. Bro. We have not yet seen anybody mention much about you know, being able to know more about the activities through social media, but I guess we'll see how things unfold. But the most amazing thing is that she's doing things with sitting with Baba and what feels right before she posts things, which is so unique compared to anyone else who posts things on social media. So there's that element of purity we just really need to acknowledge. And finally, the last piece in terms of the numbers here, there was a lot of modifications to others of this class here. And uh, Sister Judy and Sister Diane and Hendra Bai and Tommy Bai. I'm sure there was other instruments too in terms of you know, the, the instruments that were involved, the kitchen sets under them. And so Maswaki then in terms of just a lot of the, the stuff that was happening in the kitchen organization, everything. The whole point again was um, to make sure there was a uh, Perhaps a better space for English women, you know, a better space and a more quiet space for those who are preparing both in the kitchen. So a lot of these things have actually come up, um, which was in essence was captured by the numbers as well. And I think that's really about it. The essence is really this again: you know, what does the what, what do we need, and how do we sustain ourselves? I think that's it. Is there anything? And so I'm just going to pass the mic to Mr. Judy and congratulate everyone because I know that was extremely fun. <laughs> Thank you, Nora. That was wonderful. Very thorough. That's a lot of work. You have no idea how much the accounting takes up. Um, how much the accounting takes up. There's a lot of admin actually that happens. Um, I'm aware of the time, so I'm going to be as useful. The last point on here is update on center search. We had hoped they Rang could um, be involved in that. He's speak to that since he's been most involved. Um, the main update is the center search is still going on. <laughs> so when we say center search, we're really lucky. You know, Baba has provided this space. It's a beautiful space. It's allowing for so much sustenance. The vibrations love it. So we're very, very lucky. We also live in a very large city. <laughs> it's very spread out. So um, it's a bit of a challenge for everyone to be able to come here to uh, to get to the Center for Activities. And so this is why we've been filling the gap with things like Heavens Today. I just came from a place called The Ritual, which is in Britannia. Um, again, just filling the gap. 
Uh, the feeling has always been that as I change, the world changes. <laughs> so when we talk to the center search, um, I can't help but feel it's so connected to the internal um, activities of souls collectively, basically us. So that really helps to invoke the center. We do have um, a soul who has access. He's, she's a realtor and she helps to look for sites that meet our criteria. We do have specific like, criteria. Just some of them that we share is A, that it be central if possible, that it be close to public transit, that it be safe, that it have parking. That's huge. That has caused so much problem. That it be the proper zoning. That's huge where you run into problems. Um, that it be accessible for all mobilities. That we might find a beautiful space on the second floor with no elevator. Problem. Yeah. Um, so accessible to all mobilities if possible. And then, you know, we'd love it to have restroom facilities. <laughs> um, my big thing, there's two things in my heart. One is central, so it can serve many souls from all parts of Calgary uh, and beyond. But the other is a kitchen for our remarkable kitchen staff. This is a wonderful kitchen, but I've seen you in there. And you're amazing, but it's you're like a little angel on the head of a pin. <laughs> so, um, and just you churn so much out of that sense. Uh, the kitchen is remarkable. So. A, a, a space that's worthy, worthy of your stage and your capacities and your volume, basically. Um, but so the search continues. Uh, Calgary's in a recession, and yet prices don't really drop. Um, I see places, we've been looking for two years, I've seen the same spaces vacant for those two years with no drop. So these people who own these spaces are paying for their empty space. They're getting no profit on it, but they either they are wait, hang, holding out for an economic recovery that may never come, <laughs> or they offer a short-term lease so that they can get a little money until that economic recovery comes. <laughs> so it's a really strange situation out there. But beyond the so-called reality, I can't help but feel it's really connected to our collective spiritual stage. Um, saying that, if you ever see something that looks like it might meet that criteria as you walk and move around, we like to pass that information on to Dave Ang and he follows up. All right, so if you feel, oh, I think I found something, try and get a number and a location and we'll pass it on to Dave Ang and he's good to follow up. Is that okay? Is there any questions on that? Because I'm aware of the time I'd like to free you, liberate you, because I can see droopiness going on. Is there any questions? On any of that. Okay. We're good? All right. Um, any questions in general on anything you've heard? Because the last thing we have here is other business. We don't do busy, other unbusyness. Is there anything you want to add? Something came to me as I was sharing it. It's gone now. So. We're good? In general, um, I just think it's all an amazing service team here. Everyone in this room is part of it. Um, we have the best of all, all worlds. Everyone loves to study and everyone loves to cooperate. And so everything goes along really nicely. And, and we get some also. <laughs> How can I complain? Um, nothing to add? All right. Shall we say on Shanti and have a moment of silence? Uh, let me just a moment of
And I just noticed that the speakerphone had been turned off. I'm not sure when that happened, but did you hear any of this to me? Yes, honestly. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. Did you have any questions, anything you wanted to add? Okay, fantastic. Well, until we meet again, bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.